Greetings all you associated gamblers, DNRS membership club members, DNRS wagering syndicate members of 2015, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, and whoever else is viewing this video today. How you doing? It's Tuesday afternoon, February the 23rd. Another month just about to come to an end. Another boring Tuesday afternoon. I figured I'd do this little recap video and make a couple other announcements that I want to make before I leave the house here on this beautiful Sunday, uh, Sunday, beautiful Tuesday afternoon. It's sunny. It's a little bit chilly. It's going to be up around 60 today, 60, 62 in Vegas. But it's blue skies and sunny. But we did have snow here. Can you believe this? Yep. Sunday night, in the middle of the night, it started coming down. Huge, huge flakes of snow just coming down. Snow all over the ground out here in Summerlin because we're, you know, kind of high up in the mountain, going up to the mountains here, so it's, we're higher elevation. So when it does drop and they do get precipitation, we do get some snow here in Summerlin on the west side of town. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, it accumulated pretty good. I looked out the window about 3 o'clock in the morning, and uh, uh, there was about... What, three inches of snow on the, on the thing? But, of course, it all melted by, you know, in the morning, next morning, it all melted away. But, you know, it was all over the news because that's big news here in Vegas when it, uh, when it uh, snows. It's big news in Las Vegas, Nevada. But, uh, anyway, that's the way it is. And I uh, figured I'd do a little bit of a little, little, little quick Sunday recap just to let everybody know about the DNRS numbers on Sunday. Had two top-rated winners, two second-rated winners, one third-rated winner, and two fourth-rated winners. So two, four, six, seven out of the ten races, uh, the winner came out of my top four-rated horses. Uh, biggest mutual was forty-five dollars on a fourth-rated horse. Uh, that was one uh, payoff that was good, and we uh, we uh, we slapped them around pretty good in that race. I think it was the third race of the night. So we caught a couple decent payouts. We had one ice-cold exacta. That paid halfway decent, $41. That was, uh, let's see here. Uh, let me go through here real quick. First race, it was all dead chalks. My fourth rated horse won. My top rated horse ran second. And my uh, second rated horse ran third. So there, there was all the numbers, but it was very chalky. Small payouts on that race, $16 exact, a $37 try. Of course, the second race didn't even bother betting. That was a Passeroo race because of uh, another six-horse trot field with Justice Jet in there. Doc Narotsky letting, uh, letting his buddy Welch steal all the money with this trotter right now. Uh, he, doesn't let him, he doesn't make him sit out a week like they used to do back in the day. If you won too many races they would, uh, in, in, these, in these kind of classes, they would uh, they would tell you, you got to sit out a week, but they uh, but that's not the case. He needs horses, and uh, he figures let Roger take the cash because Roger's a good guy, in, in Doc's eyes. But anyway, uh, yeah, Justice Jet, another one to five shot. Doc started off the pick five with a one to five shot in his little patented six horse field with a one to five shot. Doc wanted to make sure that everybody was alive. Everybody's got to be alive after that first leg of the pick five. All right. Yeah, the third race here, I had him rated five one eight seven. It came in 7581. All my top four selections landed in the money, and I was glad that the uh, fourth rated horse beat my top rated horse, who was the five. He beat him and paid $45. That made for a nice exact to pay out of 141, and a trifecta paid $394. And the super box up my four horses and catch a $680 super in that race. And a $394 try if you box up my four, or, you know, however you bet. Run the top-rated horse first and second, you know, whatever you do, you catch that too. Take the top-rated horse, run first and second in exact as also with the other top three horses. And you catch a $141 deck, and we cash pretty good on that race. All right. So, moving on, the fourth race, my second-rated horse won. My third-rated horse was second. Uh, my fourth rated horse slipped up there for third and made the try made the try pay pretty nice. He was a long shot and nitty gritty with Hitman Heitman. The try came back $123. So uh, the exact was only uh, $19, but the try was halfway decent, 123. Okay. So fifth race, fifth race, uh, fifth race. My top rated horse ran second, and he got beat by my lower rated horse of nine horse, and then my uh, second rated horse ran third. 
So if you took my top rated horse again and you ran him first and second with my other numbers, you cash again. You know, that's only a $20 bet for a 50 cent try for all you small bettors out there. You take the top rated horse, you run him first and second with my other five numbers I give you, and uh, it's $10 on top and ten dollars per second and you catch a whole lot of those fifty cent tries that pay halfway decent when you run my top rated horse first or second so that's what happened in that race second uh, top rated horse ran second so you cash that race if you run my top rated horse first and second which i do many 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 times when i'm betting so anyway uh... unless the top rated horse is too low then it's not worth it but uh... anyway moving on let's see what happened in the sixth race uh... oh yeah here we go again in the sixth race Oh man, I was all over this Windy City Diane. I had him I had her top rated at 16 to 1. Yep, she came up top rated at 16 to 1. I was all over her in win tickets, try tickets, exact the tickets, super tickets, everything with my other numbers. And my other numbers ran right there. She ran second. She got snapped by Hitman Heitman, Kimberly R. The wire went by her. And I was kind of pissed off because I had a nice win ticket on her, 16 to 1, and the gimmicks would have paid way bigger, and the whole ball of wax. But Heitman, which was my lower-rated horse down there in my top selections, he, uh, my, uh, my selections, he snapped my top-rated horse at the wire. But nevertheless, the exact that came back 68 with my top-rated horse running second, and 224 on the try and 498 on the super, just like I mentioned the start, uh, race before, run my top-rated horse first and second. Catch a whole lot of those gimmicks. Man, but man, that hurt. That hurt. 16 to 1. Those gimmicks and that everything would have paid way bigger with her on top with a $30 or $34 mutual. But you know what happens. They so got to take what they give you. So then we move on to the seventh race. And what happened here? Uh, my second rated horse beat my uh, third rated horse. Uh, so it came in 2 1. I had the two rated second, another second rated winner. Gimmicks didn't pay that big. $21 on the exact, that was the start of the pick four, and $88 on the try. They were all over our Miss Lily. They were betting her pretty good because, you know, uh, Mike, Mike Oostein was driving, and uh, 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 Ernie, uh, Alex Adam, not Ernie, not, not his brother Ernie, sorry, that almost slipped out, Ernie, but uh, Alex Adam uh, claimed the horse last time out uh, from Perry Smith. He figured he could uh, improve him off of Smith, you know. Uh, Alex wins some races too, though. You got to watch out for Alex Adams. He puts him over. But anyway, isn't that right, Morgan and McGee? Yeah, look at him saying, "Yep, yep, I drove for Alex when I was in." Yep, Morgan said, "I drove for Alex when I was in Chicago." Yep, and McGee goes, "Yeah, I drive for Alex once in a while. Yeah, he can put him over when he wants to." Okay, so anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, our list Millie ran second. When uh, when uh. Leonard with the uh, window wiper, he, he win the race. Uh, let's see here. Moving on to eighth race, what I have here. Uh, didn't do any good in the uh, My second rated horse was second, but my lower rated horse won the race. Uh, and uh, uh, didn't catch nothing in that race. Uh, ninth race was decent, decent here. I had him rated uh, 5, 1, 2, 3, top 4. And uh, came in 2-5. My third rated horse won and paid 23-60. Third rated winner over my second rated winner. Uh, over my top top rated horse, I'm saying. My third rated over my top rated. Exactly came back a nice $79. Uh, missed the trifecta in that race, though, because the four got up and beat my eight horse. Uh, the four horse, Hot, uh, Hot Rod Riley May with Oosting. He, got, he held on for, uh, for third there. Uh... He hadn't raced. Uh, he raced last week and got totally destroyed. That's why he didn't rate uh, Sunday night. He had the rail with Warren, and uh, he was sitting third. And then he just backed through the field and got beat 15 lengths. But he was off. He needed to start, I guess. He was off since January 3rd, right before their break. So he raced kind of, kind of horrible last week. But Mike was back up on him, and Mike gets along with him pretty good. And he left with him, and he got a trip, and he uh, held on for third. But you know what? I did see something in that race. Now I don't know if they were. They took a little longer to put the official up. I don't know if they were looking at it or what. But something happened up the backside after the quarter. Uh, it seemed like uh, they got. Uh, Mike was on the lead. He took the lead, and it seemed like as soon as he took the lead, I don't know. It, it appeared to me that. Uh, uh, he shut the air pretty, he, he, you know, shut down the horse pretty, pretty good there. Uh, and uh, it kind of caught, I thought it caused a little confusion behind him because I know horses sitting in the three and four, a couple horses made a break. 
you know, so I don't know if they were looking at that to see if he shut the air a little bit too quick on the front end or what they were doing, but they didn't, they didn't put an inquiry up and they, they left them up. So that's the way that went. But anyway, we caught a $79 exacto with a $23 third rated winner. And then moving on to the last race, I had the top rated winner that paid $11 and change, the one horse. I had him rated 110.8927. And we caught the uh, ice cold uh, exact in that race for $41 with an $11 top rated winner. And my second horse, rated horse, ran second. And then uh, we had the two in there also in our numbers. And the uh, try came back 165 So that's the way it uh, went Sunday night. Not bad. We made some money Sunday night. Could have made a little more. I was alive in the pick five after uh, I think the first three legs or something. And then... Uh, Forget who knocked me out. I think Hot Holmes or something. Hot, Hot Holmes or something knocked, knocked me out. Let me, let me learn that. Let me try it real quick here. Uh, yeah, I had the first leg, of course, single, single Justice Jet. Had that $45 horse, had him. And then had Park Lane Sparkle live after three legs. And then we moved on to the fifth race where I had, uh, I think, three horses. Uh, I had two horses in there. One and four. My top two rated horses I used. And it's all, that's, that's all, the only, that's how deep I went in that race. And of course they ran second and third, got beat by the nine. The nine didn't rate because he had the nine hole. I mean, he'd been coming off the rail, the two and three hole, you know, and uh, he, he, he just didn't rate to win the race. But uh, nevertheless, he did win. And he beat my top two rated horses and knocked me out of the pick five, which I would have had three horses going in the last leg. Three or four horses, I can't remember. But uh, anyway, that's how that went. But we made some money Sunday night uh, on those other races. So anyway, that's how it went there. And uh, now we got to wait till Thursday night, Maywood, and then the big weekend. Hopefully we can slant a few races. Oh, I got to get ready for that uh, handicapping contest that they're uh, that they're having at uh, horsetourneys.com to win your way into the Meadowlands uh, contest in April. Got to get ready for that on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Can't forget that. Got it written down there on the calendar. Make sure I get my selections in, see, see what happens. But speaking of contests, I wanted to mention to everyone out there, all you viewers, that, uh, you know, uh, are always talking about handicapping contests. And I, I think the other day, two days ago, was it? Or Monday? Was it yesterday? I think yesterday. Somebody put up a topic about we need a handicapping contest over at Barn to Wire. And uh, I clicked on it, and they're talking about some kind of handicap, you know, doing some kind of fake handicapping contest, you know, no money involved or nothing like that, uh, to see, you know, who can beat who, I guess, uh, uh, or something they were talking about, uh, handicapping Yonkers on Tuesday. Well, I don't, I, I don't even bother with that on Tuesday. I don't bother with Yonkers at all. Okay, I got too much work to do on the weekends with the other tracks. I don't have no time for that kind of nonsense. But speaking of handicapping contests, I wanted to let everybody know out there that the operators of Ultimate Harness Racing, which is onestopharnessracing.com, uh, go to the website and uh, visit it, onestopharnessracing.com, that's the number one, and uh, they're going to they're gonna run a handicapping contest on uh, March 14th, Saturday, March 14th, they're going to run a handicapping contest, and... Uh, that they're sponsoring, and they're going to give away $100 cash money. $100. I think I got one in here. Did they say $100? $100? Yeah, I got $100. Yeah. One of these jobs. One of these jobs. A nice, crisp $100, new $100 bill. Yeah, they're going to give that away to the top guy that wins the contest on Saturday. Uh, you know, it's a free to enter. It's free contest. Why don't you guys that are all you handicappers that think you're hot shots, I'm not going to be in it. I'm not eligible to play in it. So you don't have to worry about me. And I also want to point out that on that day, I think I read, uh, 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 you got to post your selections by 1 o'clock, the day of the contest, Pacific Coast time. So that's my time. You got to have all your selections posted for your picks for Meadowlands and Belmoral Park. Okay, so what's going to happen is all my DNRS customers. I want to make this announcement that until the contest closes and no more horses are being posted by the participants, 
My numbers will not go out to the customers, even if I have them done and uploaded, ready to go out. I am not going to send my numbers out until after the, the selection process closes. Because, I, I, you know, nobody, I don't, I, it's not fair for someone that's a customer of mine to see my, May, uh, my Belmoral and Meadowlands numbers and then maybe use them to try to win the contest. Do your own handicapping, and let's see how you handicap on your own, everyone. And uh, uh, take down, you know, a $100 bill. You know, it's $100. Uh, they're going to they're gonna mail it out or send it out, however they're going to do it. They're going to send it out to, uh, to the winner. And, oh, also... Um, going to give away, I told them I would give away uh, a five-pack, a DNRS five-pack for Maywood and Belmoral Park to the winner. So that's $125 value. $100 cash and a five-pack of DNR, DNRS numbers. You can use them on any days you want for Maywood and Belmoral Park. So why don't you guys that are all your handicappers shoot over at all the information's at onestopharnessracing.com. Go over there, click on the page, It'll take you to where you can register for the contest. All you got to do is sign up and register a name. I don't care what, uh, you know, what name you use. Use any name you want. You know, uh, just uh, sign up and uh, let them know that you're, uh, you like to participate and you're in. That's all it takes. Just register and then come, come back on March the uh, 13th when it uh, opens up for you to put your selections in. March 13th until 1 o'clock on the 14th. Put your selections in and then sit back and have some fun. And see who wins. See who can take down the money and the five-pack and the bragging rights that they pick the most winners in the contest. It seems like a fun contest. It's going to be, you know, the standard win-place bets. There, I guess you got to pick. You could use seven races uh, on each track of your choice, except for the two races that are going to be designated, everyone, all players must bet those two races. So you have to put in your selections for those two races. So when they announce that, before the uh, selection process opens, you can choose any, uh, any of the other races on the card for your seven races that you want to put your selections in for. And also... At each track, you're going to be allowed one $2 exacta box ticket on three horses. A three-horse, $2 exacta box. One at, May one at Meadowlands, one at Belmore. And there will be no cap on the exacta. So, hey, if you come up with an exacta that pays two, three, four hundred dollars $400, that's going to help you big time uh, to tabulate against your other earnings. And that's the way it's going to be. But there is a cap on the win place bets, as in most contests. Uh, that that are always out there, even in the thoroughbred contest we go to, there's always that 20 to 1 cap because, you know, that prevents some guy from just sitting back and, you know, looking at the program. And this horse is 15 1 in the morning, and I'll throw a ticket in on him. There's no handicapping involved there. I'll throw a ticket in on him, and maybe he'll win, and, and I'll knock somebody out that picked 10 winners. That's no good. That's no good. So that's why they have those caps. But there'll be no cap on the exact box ticket because it's hard to hit an exact box that pays any decent money. But if you pick an exacta that pays fifty, sixty, seventy dollars, that's going to help your total a lot. So anyway, that's I wanted to make that announcement. OneStopHarnessRacing.com. The operators are going to sponsor that uh, uh, handicapping contest on the fourteenth. Uh, for all you people that are interested in harness racing and uh, you know like to have a little bit of fun. So anyway, that's the way it is. So shoot over there and uh, get signed up. I love to watch the action. See who wins it. Uh, and takes down the old prize. But anyway, that's it. That, that's all I wanted to say as far as an announcement goes. Um, and uh, we'll look forward to Thursday night, Maywood Park. Harness Eye doesn't come out here in Vegas until tomorrow morning, where I'll get the Harness Eye and get the numbers all done for Thursday's DNRS membership uh, members, customers, whoever purchased them for Thursday. And, of course, my 2015 DNRS Wagering Syndicate members who always get the numbers because they're in the Wagering Syndicate. So, that's it. I'm going to shut it down now, and uh, I'm going to leave the house and get out of here and go do something on this nice, sunny day here. And uh, 
kill the day. So time passes by fast because, man, it's boring Monday to Thursdays. It's really boring. Other than when I go out and do something with the family and the wife and stuff, you know. I usually like to hit a movie. I like to hit a movie, especially in the wintertime. You know, when, well, I say winter. It's not winter out here, but it's still winter. You know, I like to hit a movie on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, go see a couple movies maybe. You know, they got the old uh, seniors, seniors uh, which is uh, 50, 50 years and older if you're a club member at Suncoast or Red Rock. Uh, they have the uh, movie discounts at $4, so we like to shoot over there and go see a couple movies, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So we do things, but it's pretty boring Monday to Thursday with no harness racing in Chicago, you know. But that's what you got to do, and God forbid if they ever went to two days a week, boy, that'd be brutal. But I doubt if they'll do that. I doubt it. Everybody's worried that, like, Maywood's going to shut down. Maywood, Maywood still has been awarded dates by the racing board from... January for January until December. Maywood still has those dates on Thursdays and Fridays. Okay, of course they were talking about shutting Maywood down after after June, but I think now this is my prediction. We'll see how it turns out. That uh, with this bankruptcy going on and the fact that the Johnsons have to pay back these uh, these casinos, uh, all that money that what is it seventy eight million dollars. Uh, and they're in bankruptcy court, I doubt if they're going to want to lose any days of racing because they're going to have to show the court that they have income and they're making money, which don't, don't let anybody fool you about them not making money. They're making money. They're running a racetrack. They got races going. They're making money. Right? They're making money on recapture. They're making money on handle. They're making money on whatever food they sell, a parking, you know, whatever, a dining room, whatever they make money on, they're making money. Believe me, they're making money. So I doubt that they're going to shut Maywood down and just race two nights a week. It'll take them from now till 2025 to pay back that $78 million if they don't have race dates and they're not racing. So that's my prediction. I think they're still going to race the same schedule Thursday to Sunday after June. Anyway, let's hope so. But that's it. So anyway, I'm going to shut it down now. I said that a couple minutes ago and I kept rattling away. But anyway, uh, so long for now. And uh, from me, Dave McGee, Tony Morgan, and the DFR Harness Eye, we want to wish everyone the best of luck, stay healthy, and good racing. <laughs>